When you play the Game of Thrones, you subscribe and like. Or you die. There is no middle ground. All right, hello YouTube. Welcome back to the Grease Comedy YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be talking about Maggie the Frog's prophecy to Cersei. What actually was going on there? And what are things that are still being hinted at in that prophecy that have yet to happen? Things that are deeply enrooted in Cersei's character and how she's trying to prevent them, like we see in A Feast of Crows and the future chapters she has in Dance of Dragons. But before we get into the video, if you guys like to like, subscribe, and comment, please do to help the channel grow, or peel out my like this content as well. And let's get into the video. So, before we actually do an analysis, I want to read you guys the entire prophecy as a whole, or this entire kind of page. And then we're going to go line by line and figuring out what stuff has already happened and what stuff is going to be prophesized in the future that is yet to come. All right, so starting off the chapter, we're going to skip to where they start doing the actual, like, prophecy. So three questions, may you ask, the crone said. Once she had her drink, you will not like my answers. Ask or be gone with you. Go, the dreaming queen thought. Hold your tongue and flee, but the girl did not have sense enough to be afraid. When will I wed the prince, she asked. Never, you will wed the king. Beneath her golden curls, the girl's face wrinkled up in puzzlement. For years after, she took those words to mean that she would not marry Rhaegar until after his father, da Ares, had died. I will be queen, though, asked the younger. A. Malice gleamed in Maggie's yellow eyes. Queen you shall be until there comes another, younger and more beautiful, to cast you down and take all that you hold dear. Anger flashed across the child's face. If she tries, I will have my, my brother kill her. Even then, she would not stop, willful child as she was. She still had one more question to her, one more glimpse into her life to come. Will the king and I have children? she asked. Oh, I. Six and ten for him, and three for you. That made no sense to Cersei. Her thumb was throbbing where she'd cut it, and her blood was dripping on the carpet. How could that be, she wanted to ask, but she was done with her questions. The old man, or the old woman was not done with her, however. Gold shall be their crowns, and gold their shrouds, she said. And when your tears have drowned you, the Valonqar shall wrap his hands around about your pale white throat and choke the life from you. What is a Valonqar? Some monster the golden girl did not like that foretelling. You're a liar, and a warty frog, and a smelly old sa savage, and I don't believe a word of what you say. Come away, Malara. She is not worth hearing. And that kind of ends the part that I wanted to talk about. So, if we go kind of line by line and the things and the claims that she ends up actually making within this, let's look at the 11 distinct claims she tries to make. One or more people in the tent have no future. That's something I didn't really read in the paragraph, but she says, like, one or more people in this tent have no future. This is referring to uh, Malar because she is not going to be alive. Uh, at, by the end of the day. Also, Cersei will never marry the prince. Now, this is going to refer to Rhaegar, because Cersei was asking, will I marry the prince, who at this time was Rhaegar? We know that does not happen. So, she then makes the claim, or, yeah, she makes the claim that Cersei will marry the king. Now, we know this is Robert. So, again, we're kind of going through the beginning part of this is all stuff that's happened. Cersei becoming queen is something that else is that is mentioned. This also happens. But this is where we kind of go off right there will become another younger and more beautiful to cast you down and take all that you hold dear now this is interesting because we're led to believe that this is marjorie is it actually marjorie i don't think so right so i think the big thing here is i think marjorie is actually going to die in the next book and i think it's going to be I very much flip flop how I think about Marjorie because I think Marjorie right now, she's being held by Randall Tarly to await her trial. Everyone here is like, oh yeah, Marjorie's not going to get accused at this trial. This is what Cersei thinks. Cersei, in her own mind, kind of doesn't think it's a good idea for her to get executed anyway because it would completely turn the Tyrells against the crown. So everyone at this point doesn't want Marjorie to be executed. But. The wild card here is Varys, we know, is in King's Landing. And we know that a lot of the time something is stated as obvious that this is, you know, not going to happen. Things start to go awry. So I think Marjorie, one way or another, because of 
Varus wanting to get the Tyrells away from the Lannisters, creating chaos, making it easier for young Griff. Varys could very easily try to spin that and get Marjorie killed to further destroy the Rift no longer. Because at this point, the only thing, in my opinion, keeping the Tyrells alongside the Lannisters is that marriage. So we'll move on from there. But who is the another young and more beautiful? So I think there's actually two meanings to this. If we look at the decisions Cersei has been making based upon this prophecy she's been told since a young age... I think, for one, this could be referencing herself, right? Cersei's kind of older now. She's not as beautiful. She has a lot of, you know, aging signs. This could be talking about, one, her younger self, things she experienced when she was younger affecting her decision-making that eventually is going to get her cast down. Now, at the same time, this also could be referencing to not only Ariane, but also Daenerys. Because Ariane, I think this is actually referencing Ariane. I don't think it's referencing Daenerys. Just based on the fact that I don't think Cersei is going to be alive long enough for when Dany comes over. So I think this very much could be a prophecy that one is actually Cersei herself. Because she constantly thinks of your, her younger self in this prophecy. That this another younger and more beautiful to cast you down and take all that you hold dear is actually herself because she makes all these bad decisions could also be Ariane as well i don't think daenerys but let me know what you guys think on that do you think that line of it could have been daenerys or do you think it's still marjorie i personally don't think it's marjorie i think she's lost a lot of her power but it's possible moving on we have the king will have 16 children and cersei will have three children again that is completely correct something they broke in the show for some reason but yeah that is correct uh, the children will wear golden crowns and golden shrouds. So, this is another interesting one because we have Joffrey has already died. And I think this is referencing that Tommen and, and Marcella are going to die by the end of the book series, which I think is very likely. I think this is going to come either when Aegon comes over, uh, when all of this starts happening. We know that the Sand Snakes are kind of with them. So, I think that one definitely is going to mean the death of her children. Her tears will drown her. So the next and last kind of part of this will be that because of what she's experienced, she will go through a deep depression that will lead her to make even worse decisions that she's already been making and will kind of be the final nail in the coffin for her story as a whole. And then the Valonqar will strangle her. Now, again, I don't think this is Tyrion. It doesn't make logical sense unless Cersei makes it to the end and... Something along those lines happens. I think this has to be Jamie. Jamie making it back to the city. He realizes what Cersei's become, ends up strangling her. That's the way I think we see that part of it play out. Because the Valon Car means younger brother. So this could either be Tyrion or Jamie. And I think it's going to be Jamie. Now, the last thing we have is Malara will never marry, and that's because she is murdered. So out of this whole thing, right? I think this is the downfall of Cersei in this prophecy, but it can be taken a lot of different ways. Like, who is the person that's going to be more young, more young and beautiful to take her down? Who is the Valon Carr? There's a lot of question marks here, and I, I think Jamie is the person to kill her. I think because we have way too much foreshadowing that they've come into this world together, they will leave it together. Uh, I think the beautiful thing, it's too obviously Marjorie, in my opinion, because Marjorie is in a situation where... I think she is going to die. It just makes logical sense to part the Tyrell and Lannister alliance. I think that's the way you do it. So I think that could either refer to Ariane or possibly Daenerys. Like really, really, really shot in the dark Sansa. But I don't think so on that one. Now, what I could say is you could say Sansa because Sansa was involved. She wasn't you know, knowingly involved, but she was involved in Joffrey's death. So could it be Sansa? Maybe Sansa, again, we've talked about on this channel how Sansa could possibly marry young Griff instead. Maybe that's Littlefinger's play. And Sansa alongside of young Griff take her down. So that's kind of why that line's there for Sansa. Sansa kind of gets revenge for a lot of the things that happened to her father and other things with Cersei. That could be a possibility as well. Let me know what you guys think, because I think the more interesting part of the plot is the, or this 
prophecy as a whole is the younger and more beautiful part of it to cast her down because the bound car is kind of limited on who it could possibly be and another thing is if you believe that Tyrion is actually a targaryen right that mad king and then his mother or not his mother but Tyrion's mother got together and made Tyrion then the Valonqar also couldn't really refer to Tyrion. So I think Jamie is the clear answer there. It's just how will we get there, in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think about the prophecy. Uh, I had a fun with this video. I just kind of randomly, I didn't have this planned, but on vacation, I kind of thought about it and I wanted to do this video. So thank you guys all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. If you think this has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention.